welcome to another episode of, you guessed it, Gura Codes. My name is Gerald and today I will show you something about data binding in Xamarin Forms. So this will probably be a level 200 uh, session video. Um, it's probably good if you know a little bit about the MVVM pattern and you have done something with Xamarin Forms before or WPF or something like that. So without further ado, let's just dive right in. I've already created a file new Xamarin Forms project here, which is called Gurgoats Data Binding. And here is the PCL. Let me see if I can blow it up a little. Here we go. And here is the Android and iOS project. That's all we need for today. So let's have a look at the PCL right now. Uh, it has a XAML page. Uh, I love to use XAML pages. You can use data binding from code as well, but it really has its strength when you're using a separate view layer. Um, so maybe it's good that I explain why data binding is helpful in uh, the first place. Um, if you are using the MVVM pattern in your application, um, there is a lot of advantages you will get from that. Uh, Xamarin Forms is already very much anticipated for the use of MVVM and it basically means that you want to separate your uh, code and your UI and your business logic uh, really good from each other so and data binding really helps you to avoid having to write logic uh, to change certain elements in your UI um, so let's just see if we look at this uh, thing here then we have a content page with a label and it just has a static text so what we can do here is say okay I don't want to have a static text here but I want to use a binding um, so with this you specify you want to use data binding and then you say okay I want to use the view model text and don't mind the the braces here you're going to need them and this is just the identifier the name of the property that you uh, use to access your text in this case so let's have a look um, to be really strict about this I will also create a separate view model so let's go file new class and name it uh, view model and in this view model we're going to say okay uh, we're going to have a property uh, of type string and call it view model text so now um, it's just an empty string because it gets initialized as an empty string so it doesn't have any value so if we would start this then we would see nothing so let's just give this a constructor as well and assign some value to our view model text is hello from the view model what's wrong here oh it doesn't need a return type of course um, okay so this is our view model now the last thing we need to do I mean it doesn't magically know um, what the view model object is so the last thing we need to do is go to our code behind and say okay our binding context binding context is a new view model and now a new view model is instantiated and will be used as the binding context so and then it will just know okay from my binding context I will can access the property view model text 
and display that here in the label. So let's just see if that works. And while it's building, I'll explain a little bit more. Um, because what I see happening a lot, uh, like on Stack Overflow or that kind of thing, is that you set the binding context uh, like this, and then you go afterwards and say, okay, um, well, I'd have to put this in a separate variable. Whoops. Well, here it is. Hello from view model. So this works. But back to my explanation. So what I see happening a lot is you say, okay, var view model is new view model. And then you use it here, view model. And after you set the binding context, you're going to say, okay, view model dot view model text is um, whatever. And this is not going to work. If I run this again, you will still see um, it says hello from view model and not say whatever. So here it comes. App is starting now. And you'll see it still says hello from view model. And this is wrong and right at the same time. It's right because at the time you set the binding context, it will just then update the property values um, at that moment, and it will just keep those values for your UI. But of course, that's not what you want. You want it to update whenever these property value changes, because if you get values back from your REST API service or something like that, you update your properties on some kind of objects and you want your UI to reflect those changes. And that is when you need to implement the um, I notify property changed. I notify property changed. And this has one event you have to implement which is the property changed. And if we want to do this, we need to create a private string view model text. Whoops, not like this, obviously. And give these properties a body, so this will return the view model text. And here we are going to set it. So we set the view model text is value. But what we can do now is say, okay, um, if property changed not is null. And then we're just going to say, okay, if it's not null, so someone has uh, hooked into it, then we're going to say, okay, property changed invoke and the sender will be this, and new property change event args, and then the property name, you can use this fancy new C sharp feature. Well, it's not that new anymore, but, and you can say view model text. Okay, and now, if we run it again, we should see uh, the whatever text coming up. So let's just see if that is indeed the case. Well, you see it just flipping over right now uh, because what it does is just initialize it first um, with our text from the constructor and then it sets it as the binding context so it will show you briefly and then it will just show the uh, set the view model text or whatever and change accordingly so what happens now is because of the binding the binding uh, example binding engine uh, detects that our view model implements the i notify property changed and it will automatically um, make a event handler which hooks into this property changed and then it will get invoked like this every time. 
Um, of course, if you're going to have multiple properties and you have to repeat this code a lot of times, you probably don't want to do that, so you probably want to um, create some private void um, on property changed method with the string property name and put it here. And then here you can just say, okay, on property changed is name of view model text. This will do the same, but you don't have to repeat um, all this code if you're going to have another property like this, which is going to be called view model text one. And you don't have to repeat all this code over here. You can just say, okay, on property change for view model text one. And there's actually even a better way to do this. Um, if you go over to your NuGet packages, you have property changed dot fody, and this is a quite handy NuGet package. I use it in almost every app that I I've built. And what this does is inject this arbitrary code uh, into any object that inherits from I notify property change at uh, compile time so it will inject the code for you and you don't have to write all that boilerplate code and that kind of stuff okay so there's one other thing I want to show you um, okay it's a bit more extensive but here we go let's just put this in a stack layout for now so we can keep on to this example as well and we're going to put in a list view here okay so now besides the label we also have a list view and well here you're going to see some more uh, binding examples I'm just going to put the binding uh, well there's there's two more things I'd like to show you so let's just go with it binding um, item list here we go and if we're going to use a list view uh, item template with bindings you're going to want to use an item template that is the template which will be used for each item in the list that you're binding it to so and it's going to be a data template there you can just use the pre-built uh, controls that are already in here so you can just say okay I want to use a text cell and the text cell text must be um, foo let's just name it foo oh no sorry going wrong here binding foo so something weird is going on here because I'm binding to this item list right here uh, and we are binding uh, we are setting the um, binding context to our view model object so let's go to our view model object and let's create a, a collection for the list view to use and normally it would go like a list or an array or whatever but if you're going to use a list view with bindings you probably want to use the observable collection and you can specify um, any type of object for it let's go with the foo object I still have to create so let's just do that right now foo object uh, which just has the property foo which I'm going to use as my title in the list you can see I'm pretty strict about my whoops coding things here okay uh, so foo object is here observable collection is already built in I just have to add the right using and now we have an observable collection of foo object why you want to use an observable collection um, because whenever a change happens in this collection uh, it also has some I notify property changed 
um, implementation and it will notify your list view that an item has been added or updated or whatever. Um, note again this is a question I see a lot. Uh, whenever something happens in foo object that doesn't mean that your observable collection will then update it. You also need to uh, add the I notify property change to your foo object. It the observable collection only takes care of the actual items that are in the list, not the content that is in the item in the list. You still follow? Okay, so I was naming this item list. Okay, let's just do get set here. And we can just initialize it here. Now there's another thing that we need to pay attention to. Um, Whenever you instantiate a new observable collection to this item list, uh, the binding will get broken. So you will have to either uh, set the binding context again, or just don't create a new observable collection, and just clear it out whenever you need it empty, and re-add the items from there. Um, so actually I will add some items right here, new foo object. Foo is bar, and let's repeat this a couple of times, two, three, mitzvah, or whatever, how you write it. Um, okay, so with this in place, we should be able to see our list view right now. So this is the second thing I want to show you. Um, here we have this item list, which comes from our view model. But here you see in my text cell, I'm just binding to foo. Here we go. Here is the list. Oh, here behind the status bar, you can still see the whatever. And here's our list view with the, the items. Um, so what you see happening here is the item list comes from our view model, but foo is from our foo object. So you see the scope of the binding has changed here. And this is the third thing I wanted to show you because um, here is where a lot of people um, get confused. Because if we would now, not on a text cell, uh, on a cell what is pretty common thing to do is um, that you give it contact actions. So let's see, is it somewhere in here? I'll really have to type it. Okay, textcell dot context actions, I believe. And you can here say, okay, I want a. Oof, was it a menu item or a toolbar item? I can't remember toolbar item, just gonna go with toolbar item. And we're going to say text and maybe make it delete or something. Actually let's make it delete. We can show the observable collection doing its magic as well. Okay, so on a toolbar item we can give it a command and this is also something we can bind to. So we can say binding delete command and here we want to implement some logic um, to delete this item from the list and maybe then also send this delete action back to the back end. Um, so why do you want to use commands? Commands is also something that is very much used in the MVVM pattern and data binding and that kind of stuff. Uh, because you can't or well you don't should not want to uh, use events in your code behind anymore because that still has to do something with your UI and uh, that's not what we want. So that is what commands are for and you can say okay uh, commands are just bindable and commands can just execute some logic and it can also say if that logic can be executed or not based on uh, certain checks like uh, is something true or false? Uh, is, is, is this item in the list already deleted? Then you can't execute this. Okay, so, but what 
you maybe you're already seeing where this is going wrong because our scope has changed here we are now in the foo object item uh, foo object object and the delete command is probably something that you don't want to implement per foo object uh, but you just want to implement the delete command in your view model and delete that certain foo object um, so the problem here is that we're scoped wrong and we can pretty easily overcome this by just saying okay um, I have to give this contact page content page excuse me a name so let's give it main page okay so now I have given it this main page name and what I need to do now binding also has some other parameters and one of them is source and here I can specify another source or well maybe you could call it scope or whatever and here I can say x x reference and I can say okay I want to reference uh, the main page and now it's going to find the um, delete command within the main page uh, code behind so this is still not what we want and we can say uh, binding context dot delete command so now it will use the delete command from um, the binding context because that's what we set anyways and we could set path here path is another uh, parameter but if you just use binding space and then the property name and as you can see you can travel through certain properties to the next one uh, and this is a shorthand you can just use say uh, without path so if you're using multiple parameters I like to put it in so you can see what's going on here okay and now for implementing our command um, of course it just has to be another property so we can go with command and delete command it doesn't know the type yet it does now and we can um, let's put it in the constructor delete command is new command and you can just um, state another method here so let's call it delete here we go and we can put in a private void um, delete method here and to make it really do something useful so let's see if we can actually make this observable collection working um, you can also put in the command parameter and we can also bind to this binding and if you do binding dot it means it will just uh, bind to this this complex object um, so it will now bind to the foo object which is in this cell and supply it as a command parameter to our delete command um, it requires a little bit of work here because now we have to say okay we know a foo object is coming in here a foo object is coming in here foo and we can now say okay in our item list let's remove um, foo so let's see if this does something just run it here and as you can see we don't need any property changed on the observable collection uh, because we are using an observable collection it will do the work for us so here we go here's our beautiful app coming up and the context items in iOS are here behind these little swipe actions behind the cells and if we now swipe the bar mitzvah and say okay delete you see that it will be removed from the observable collection and same thing goes for this one and for this one etc so if we see what's going on here uh, if I just put in a breakpoint and look at the simulator we can see whenever we do this little delete thing 
our foo object is here coming in and it will remove it from the item list here and it will update your UI directly so I think that is basically what is everything on uh, or, well not everything but the most important thing on data binding um, if you are really going to implement the MVVM pattern uh, make sure to have a look at um, a framework which helps you with that like MVVM cross or fresh MVVM um, because that really helps you to even more uh, reduce redundant code like here setting this binding context you don't want to have to do this yourself and a MVVM framework uh, depending on which one you use uh, helps you with even removing reducing this code and um, making your code even beautiful so I hope you enjoyed it I hope you learned something and um, please subscribe to uh, whatever channel you are watching this on um, follow me on Twitter JF Versluis and I hope you will tune in for another episode of Gur Codes very soon thank you bye bye Thank you.